Okay, so um, one thing that we're going to be dealing with this whole semester is units. Um, so uh, this first topic, I'm going to call this all, well, units and scientific notation. Um, I'll first talk about unit conversion. Uh, then I'll talk about scientific notation. And then I'll talk about unit prefixes. Um, unit prefix is like mega or milla, you know, millimeters, uh, megatons, uh, uh, centimeters, that kind of stuff. Um, one thing in this class, uh, a lot of people ask me about significant figures. Um, I, uh, I'm going to totally ignore significant figures. You can round however you want. I don't care about that. Um, chemistry teachers care about significant figures so much that I feel like I, I can feel free to ignore it and you'll still think about it for the rest of your lives. So, uh, so yeah, just, I'm going to grade everything based on, uh, the process you use to get to answers. Um, and so how you round really doesn't matter to me. Okay. So uh, first, unit conversions. So um, physics is uh, relationships between measurable values. And everything that's, every measurement in physics, every physics measurement has units. Um, for example, uh, 61 miles per hour uh, 40 millimeters uh, 30 kilograms Okay. Um, None of those measurements make sense without the units attached. Um, in this class, hold on. Okay. In this class, every unit will be some combination, well, it doesn't have to be combined, it could just be these individual ones, but some combination of three basic unit types. Uh, those are units for length. Um, and, uh, you know, units for length can be millimeters, inches, feet, meters, miles, and so on. You know, they, they keep going on and on. The second basic unit type is time. Uh, that can be seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, you know. <laughs> and the third one is mass. Um, and units for mass can be grams, kilograms, 
One you probably haven't heard of, slugs. Not pounds, though, by the way. Um, it's useful to point out, I think, that um, you know, your bathroom scale has a conversion from kilograms to pounds. Um, but, but pounds and kilograms are actually not the same thing. Uh, kilograms are a measure of mass, and pounds are a measure of force. And we'll talk about forces later, but uh, start getting into your head that forces and masses are not the same thing. Um, in this class, we're going to focus on um, SI units. Uh, that's the international standard way of measuring these things. And the international, the SI units are meters for length, seconds for time, and kilograms for mass. What SI stands for is French, um, but you can just think of that as like the international standard um, for unit types. And what does it mean that units that we're going to have in this class are combinations of those? Well, so you can use these alone or in combinations for other types of units. Um, examples are meters per second is a measurement, is a unit of velocity. Um, meters per second squared is a unit of acceleration. Kilogram meters per second squared is a unit of force. And notice that all these things are made up of those three basic types. Um, one thing that's going to come up often is we'll want to convert um, a measurement from one unit to another unit of the same type. Well, you can't convert a unit of speed to a unit of length. There's no way to do that. But you can convert miles per hour to meters per second, for example, because those are both units of velocity or speed, OK? And that's something that we're going to want to do pretty often. So for example, uh, let's say, uh, how many inches are there in 3.5 feet? You know, uh, you're used to doing some of these kinds of things. You could probably figure that out. Um, but for the more co uh, complicated combinations of units, it's nice to have a system for doing this. So let's talk about how to do this. So I'm going to give you sort of a general approach, and then we'll do a few example problems. Um, so the first thing to notice is for any two units of the same type, there's always a conversion factor. There's always a relationship between the two units. So 
So, um, like for example, since up here we talked about converting from feet to inches, the conversion between feet and inches is one foot is equal to 12 inches. Okay. Since those are equivalent, you know, since those are equal, if you divide one by the other one, uh, you get one, right? They're the same thing. If you divide something by itself, you get one. Um, so you can think of this conversion factor, one foot over 12 inches, as equal to one, and that's equal to 12 inches over one foot. It doesn't matter which one's in the numerator and which one's in the denominator. You're dividing something by itself, okay? And the nice thing about this conversion factor being equal to one is what happens if you multiply something by one? What happens to the original value? It's the same, yep. Um, so, for our conversions of units, what we're going to always be doing is just multiplying our original value by this conversion factor. And it won't change the original quantity, it'll just change the units and give us the same original quantity. Um, so this and this are called conversion factors. And to change units, we're going to multiply the original quantity by the conversion factor. Um, the units are approached, I guess, the same way as algebraic variables. Okay, mathematically, that's how they're approached. So if you have, um, if you have a fraction that has an X in the numerator and an X in the denominator, you can cancel those. It works the same with units. If you have a number that has an X times an X, you can turn that into X squared. It works the same with units. So the math is the same with units as it is with algebraic variables. Okay, so for our example, we're gonna start with our original quantity. So I'm going back to this three and a half feet example. Okay, so we're going to start with 3.5 feet. And we're going to multiply that by a conversion factor. Um, so I'm going to multiply this by 12 inches over one foot. Uh, the feet cancel and you multiply the two numbers. You know, the only units we have left are inches, so that's good. Um, 3.5 times 12 is 42, so we end up with 42 inches. So that's three and a half feet expressed in inches. Okay, but I glossed over one thing. Um, there are two conversion factors here, right? Every, every conversion between two units of the same type has two different conversion factors, depending on, you know, one is the reciprocal of the other one, 
right? So which one do you use? The one I used worked. Um, what if I had used the other conversion factor? Well, if we started with 42, you would, but um, what I'm thinking of is what if we started with 3.5 feet and then multiplied, which is totally legal, we're still multiplying by a conversion factor, multiplied this by one foot over 12 inches. Then you end up with, what's that number equal to something ugly? Um, you know, none of the units cancel out now. We end up with 0 0.2916 repeating. And the units are feet squared over inches. And that's not what we wanted at all. Um, that is, we didn't do anything wrong. So that really is, you can think of this as a unit of length. It is a unit of length. It's just a crazy one that no one would ever want. Um, and that number is correct in this crazy set of units. It's just not what we're looking for. So this didn't work at all. So how do we choose which conversion factor to use? So to choose the right conversion factor, remember there's always two possibilities. Choose the one that cancels the unwanted units. Okay, so what are the unwanted units in this example? Well, we're starting out with feet, but we're trying to get rid of feet and switch to inches, right? So feet are unwanted units. And so what you have to do is say, look at that original quantity, say feet are in the numerator. That means the conversion factor has to have feet in the denominator. Okay, any questions about that? You're just trying to use the conversion factor that's gonna cancel out the units we're trying to move away from. Um, and starting now, I'm gonna to switch to a different way of writing this because as we go through uh, these calculations, a lot of times we're gonna multiply a bunch of things. Um, I'm going to uh, write these multiplications. So let's say the thing that we started with. Instead of writing it like that, I'm going to write it as I'm going to put a big fraction bar and I'm going to write 3.5 feet, and instead of all the parentheses, I'm just going to write bars to separate them, just to save a few pen strokes. Um, and then so this is 12 inches over one foot. But so when you see this, it means this. Okay, so that was an example that you could probably have figured out on your own, okay? But let's go to another one where we have a combination of units. That's where things start to get uh, a little trickier to do sort of in your head or just sort of fiddle your way through. So for the next example, let's say we wanna express 
61 miles per hour in meters per second. Um, and let's say that the conversions that we're given are that one mile is equal to 1609.344 meters. And one hour is 3,600 seconds. Did anyone run the mile and track? This is, you know, in high school, you actually run 1,600 meters. That's how short you are from running a full mile, 9.344 meters. So if you, if anyone still has like track eligibility, uh, it'd be really like a boss move to, to just run the extra nine meters after that, just keep sprinting 10 meters longer. Just tell everyone you're running the mile today. You look really cool. Or actually, I'm probably not the person you should take advice about looking cool from, but I would think it was funny anyways. Um, okay, so how are we going to do this? So we're starting with 61 miles per hour. Miles is in the numerator, hours is in the denominator. Okay, and we're going to have to do the conversion in two steps this time. Um, we're going to have to convert the miles to meters, and then separately, we're going to have to convert the hours to seconds. Okay, and you can do it all in one line. Um, so it doesn't matter which order you do it in, but I'm going to do miles to meters first. So the first thing I'm going to multiply by is either one mile over 1609 meters or 1609 meters over one mile. How do we know which one of those two fractions to do? One more mile than the denominator. Yep, perfect, yep. We, we're trying to get rid of miles, so we need the fraction that has miles in the denominator to, ca to cancel this one, okay? So, um, so we'll put one mile down here, 1609.344 meters up here. And if you do the cancellations, the miles cancel, the units we have left are meters. So at this point, if we just multiplied out all these numbers, we'd have units of meters per hour. So you can think we're sort of halfway there, you know. And now we have to do the same thing for the hours. To cancel the hours, do we want the hours on top or on the bottom? This time we want it on the top because we always need to cancel wherever it is, the unwanted one is at the start. So um, this time we're gonna go one hour on top, 3,600 seconds on the bottom. The hours cancel, and the units we have left are meters per second. So we have what we want now. We just have to multiply out the numbers. Um, and so multiply 61 times 1609 divided by 3600, and you get about 27.26 meters per second. Yes. Exactly. That's a good way to say it, yeah. Um, and by the way, from now on, you could use this as a conversion for miles to meters. Uh, you could, from now on, say 61 uh, or miles per hour to meters per second. You could say 61 miles per hour is equal to 27.26 
meters per second, then you can use that as a, but I, I think it's easier to just go back to those three basic unit types than to mess with this kind of stuff. Okay, I'm gonna do the same question, but uh, let's say that instead of, so now let's do the same problem again. But now say you didn't know that one hour is equal to 3,600 seconds, okay? Instead, let's say you're given that one hour is 60 minutes and one minute is 60 seconds. Okay. So now we already saw that we can do more than one conversion in a single line. So now we're just gonna do this in three steps instead of two steps. We're gonna convert miles to meters, we're gonna convert hours to minutes, and then convert minutes to seconds. We can do it all in one line. And we better get the same thing we got in this first answer or something doesn't work, you know. So we'll start with 61 miles per hour. We'll convert the miles to meters. I'll follow the cancellations as I go. Uh, so now we have units of meters. That part's good. Now we have to go, we want to go eventually hours to seconds, but this time we're going to do it hours to minutes and then minutes to seconds. Um, to cancel the hours, we need the hours up here. The hours cancel and now we have time units of minutes and now we have to do it one more time with the minutes up here and the seconds down here and we're doing that so that we can cancel the unwanted units again the minutes Now we have units of meters per second, so we know if we multiply out these numbers, we'll get the right thing. And if you multiply out these numbers, even though you know it's a different set of numbers, but you'll get the same thing, uh, 27.26 meters per second. Okay, there's really only one more uh, thing that can come up, and that's uh, if you have basic unit types that are squared or cubed, okay? Um, so let me do an example like that. So let's express Uh, 38,640 yards per minute squared. In meters per second squared. And uh, we're going to be given that uh, one yard is equal to three feet. Uh, one meter is equal to 3.281 feet. And one minute is equal to 60 seconds. Okay, those are the conversions we're going to use.
Okay, so we're going to start with 38,640 uh, with yards in the numerator and then minutes squared in the denominator. And for me, it's easier if you, instead of writing that as minutes squared, remember that something squared is just that thing times itself. So I'm going to write this instead as minutes times minutes, okay? And that's going to remind me that I have to convert both of those, you know, each of those two. I'm going to have to do two separate time conversions to deal with those two separate minutes, okay? Okay, so first let's go uh, yards to meters. And we're going to have to do that by going yards to feet feet to meters just because of the conversions that I gave you. I could have given you the direct conversion, but I didn't because I didn't know it off the top of my head. So um, we'll go one yard in the numerator, three feet in the denominator. And the yards cancel and now we, well, I'm not going to circle that yet, but now we have uh, units of feet, okay? And now we have to go feet to meters. So 3.281 feet is equal to one meter. The feet cancel. And now our length units are meters. So we're good with the lengths. And now we have to deal with the minutes and convert those to seconds. Okay, so uh, one minute is 60 seconds. That cancels one of these two, but not the other one. And that means I have to do it again to get rid of this other minute. So just do the same thing again, one minute over 60 seconds. Now we have meters over seconds times seconds. So we have the units we want and we know we can just multiply out those numbers. And if you multiply out those numbers, you get 9.81 meters per second squared, which is, um, which is actually a quantity that uh, we're gonna use all the time. Does anyone happen to know what that is? Yeah. Yeah, so that is for something that's in free fall on Earth, that's the acceleration of the object due to gravity. So everything that's in free fall that isn't affected dramatically by air resistance as it falls, uh, accelerates downwards at 9.81 meters per second squared. Yep. Uh, we are not going to, uh, we'll have a lab where we talk briefly about what terminal velocity is and stuff like that. Um, we won't be doing any calculations involving that because we are always going to assume that air resistance is negligible. But that's a really good question. And, and uh, when you do free fall calculations, you do have to definitely ask yourself, is it a reasonable assumption that air resistance is negligible? You know, um, if you drop a feather, it flutters down to the ground like this. It's not accelerating down at 9.81 miles per hour. It's still, gravity is still pulling on it hard enough to do that, but air resistance is preventing it. We're gonna see a cool video in uh, like a week or two um, where they actually, they go to this big aerospace facility, this giant facility where they can suck almost 100% of the air out of the room, create just a perfect vacuum in this giant room. Um, it must be so expensive. But uh, so before they suck the air out of the room, they drop a bowling ball and a feather and it does exactly what you're used to it doing, you know? Then they suck all the air out of the room. 
drop a bowling ball and a feather and the, they fall exactly side by side down to the ground. The feather bangs against the ground as if it was made out of metal. It's really amazing to see. Gravity tries to make everything accelerate down at 9.81 meters per second squared. It's just air resistance that messes it up. Okay, any questions about uh, unit conversion? Okay, so let me talk now about scientific notation. I must say, like, um, I'm going through this stuff pretty fast. I know uh, overall, as this class goes on, I'm not going to go through everything this fast. Uh, I'll, we'll take time for you to work on problems in class to make sure you're getting stuff. But I, I just really want to get through this stuff um, so that you can get on to working on problems. Um, so if there's anything that when you start working on problems, you realize you didn't follow it, it doesn't make sense or whatever, bring your questions on, I guess we don't have class till Wednesday. Bring your questions on Wednesday, and I'd be happy to answer questions in class. I'm just sort of trying to rush through this stuff so we can get to the problems right now. Okay, so the idea of scientific notation is any number can be expressed as one non-zero digit and a decimal point and then a decimal times 10 to some integer power. You can express any number this way. So for example, um, negative three, four, eight, one point nine. You can express that as negative three point four eight one nine times ten to the third power. And point oh oh eight seven you can write as eight point seven times ten to the minus third. Just because you can do it doesn't mean there's any reason you'd want to do it. Like, why would you want to do that? Um, well, it's very useful uh, when you have numbers that are way, way, way smaller than one or numbers that are way, way, way bigger than one, you know? Um, like, for example, in kilograms, what's the mass of the Earth? Um, if you were writing that in standard notation, you'd have to write out 24 digits just to get to where the decimal point is. Okay, and imagine the likelihood that you're going to mess, you're going to miss one of those numbers in translating it. And if you miss one of those numbers, you're not off by a little bit. You're off by a factor of 10. You've multiplied or divided the number by 10. That's a huge, huge mistake, you know. And so when you're dealing with really big numbers or really small numbers like that, like say the mass of an electron or something, something tiny, it's much more practical to use scientific notation than to write out all the zeros, okay, for standard notation. But in order to use scientific notation, it means you need two skills. You need to be able to go from standard notation to scientific notation, and you need to be able to go from scientific notation to standard notation, okay? So, uh,
So you need to be able to do these two things. You need two skills. Uh, the first one is to start uh, with standard notation. and change to scientific notation. And if you have a, a way of doing this that works for you, feel free to do it. I'm gonna give you a way that also works. If you're, you know, for most people, you don't do this all the time. So uh, this way it works. So, um, the first step is count the number of places. Oh, and as I do this, let me uh, let me illustrate this with a number. Let's say the number is 541.6. Okay, so I'm going to take negative 541.6. I'm going to turn that into scientific notation following these steps. Uh, so count the number of places in that the decimal point moves left or right so that you have one leading digit, one digit before the decimal point. Okay, so for the example of negative 541.6, how many places do you have to move the decimal point? Two, and you have to move it left or right. So yeah, for us, it's two to the left. And then the second and last step is if you moved it to the left, then you're going to multiply by 10 to the positive power there. And if you moved it to the right, you're going to multiply by 10 to the negative n. In our case, we moved it two to the left. So our answer is negative 5.416 times 10 to the positive two. Any questions about that? So that's if we're going from standard notation to scientific. So now uh, the second thing you need to be able to do is given a number in scientific notation, go to standard notation. Um, I'm going to do, as an example here, I'm going to say that the number we start with is 6.52 times 10 to the negative fourth. Okay, so... Um, The first step is we're going to read 
the absolute value of the exponent, and I'm going to call that n. And then separately note the sign. Okay, so for the example above, n is equal to 4, and it's negative. And then the second and the last step is if it's positive, move the decimal point. n places to the right. If negative, move the decimal point n places to the left. Okay, so um, our n is four and it's negative. So we're gonna move the decimal point four places to the left. Okay, so starting here, we're gonna go one, two, three, four, there's the decimal place. Any placeholders need to be filled with zeros. And so that's our answer. Any questions about that? Okay, well, um, I'll give you some problems to work on with those. Uh, Next time, we'll just finish up with micro, milli, centi, that kind of stuff. Uh, it won't take very long, and then we'll get into um, talking about physics. All right, have a good weekend, long weekend. Uh, so see you Wednesday. Oh, yes, that's right, I'm sorry. Yes, in class, I'll see you on Wednesday. The people who have lab on Tuesday, don't miss lab. Yep.